today's video, I've got some tips and tricks for you for mid-journey AI art to help make your art more interesting and have a bit more fun with the platform. And we're gonna start with some prompt codes. Just simply add these to the end of your prompt and see what results you can get. The first code is aspect ratio, where we type in our prompt and we type dash dash AR for aspect ratio and then a number for the width and a number for the height. And you can see this image is twice as wide as it is high and because its aspect ratio is two to one. So two units wide by one unit high, and that's how you can control the aspect ratio with certain algorithms in mid-journey. The next is dash dash creative, which you can use with the test or test P algorithm. And we're gonna compare using it and not using it with a prompt here. So I'll submit superhero turtle as a test and then superhero turtle with the creative tag so we can compare the difference. So you can see here, the straight up test is just like a normal turtle image, but by adding the creative tag, giving the journey more creativity, we get more creative images. Like this one here with the color and the goggles, it's just a little bit more creative and mid journey's gone the extra mile to make it a bit more unique. Keep in mind, this can only be used with dash dash test or dash dash test P. While we're on topic, let's talk about the test and test P algorithms. You add in dash test or dash test P to the end of your prompt, and let's look at the difference. So you can see the test algorithm has produced this artistic looking image, a step up from version three, but uh, when we switch over to test P, this is actually the photographic algorithm. So you get something a little more lifelike when using the dash dash test P code at the end of your prompts. Next, we're gonna go dash dash stylize, which allows Midjourney to stylize your image prompts. You go anywhere from zero to 60,000. By default, it is 625. This purple line I have here is the default 625. So let's try and see what results we get by stylizing the image. Now we can type dash dash stylize or simply just dash dash S. And we're gonna make max it out to 60,000 to see what results we get. Now this is our default 625 stylize we get without adding the command. And we're gonna switch over. This is our 60,000 stylized. You can see it's a little bit different. The line is kind of not as much there. It's a little bit more of an interpretation as a face. Uh, it's really gone quite off the deep end stylizing it and being more unique and creative with this, uh, with this code. So let's dial it back to about say 20,000 and see what results we get when we dial it back to that number. While it's still off the deep end a bit, you can see more cat or line features in these top two faces but it's still been pretty creative with its interpretation of our prompt only at 20,000 as opposed to 60,000. So have a bit of a play with that and see what results you can get with stylize. The next are negative keywords or dash dash NO. So I've got this outdoor scene, which I've created and I would like to get an outdoor scene, but maybe with less water or less trees or no trees or no water. So I simply typed in my, type in my prompt and then type in dash dash and O, and then I put in the words I don't want to, I want to sort of remove from my prompt. And Midjourney is going to try and create an image by excluding those words specifically. You'll notice that there are almost no trees in most of these and just a few in the others, but it's definitely been toned down. And I can't see any water anywhere in these images. So even though it hasn't been perfect and removed everything, it has done a pretty good job of removing most of that from the image using these negative words. The next is dash dash video to create a video of the creation of your image prompt. You type in your image prompt and then type in dash dash video to create your prompt. Keep in mind, this doesn't work on upscales, but once our prompt has shown up, you'll notice there's actually no video there. What we need to do is take another step. So I'm gonna to go to the top right to add a reaction to my prompt, and I need to find this envelope here. But if you can't find it there, because I've used it recently, you need to scroll down under objects and you can find it just in there amongst all of the bits and pieces. This envelope icon here, and it will create another message with your video included. You can watch it right here, or you can even scroll back up and hit an address to download the MP4 to your local computer. And this is the result, but sped up. Next is the command for quality, which is dash dash Q. And you can pop anywhere from one to five. One, I believe, being the default, and five meaning it'll take five times as long to render. You look at this original sort of default setting I have here using quality for uh, kind of like a robot face. When I up the quality to five by adding in dash dash Q and then five and submitting that, 
I get a much different, more detailed result with a lot more information. And if you zoom in a little bit closer, you can really see the difference uh, when you put these two side by side. So dash dash quality, five being the best, one being default. There's also a code for the Midjourney algorithm version. Uh, we're currently on three, but they also have four available. So if we take the same prompt, type in dash dash V space four, we get a much higher quality result using the new algorithm. But you can also go backwards. If we try dash dash V and then one to try the original algorithm, we get a completely different result again with something a little bit different than I expected, but still pretty cool in its own way. But simply type slash settings to keep up to date with the current algorithms available to you as you can see them all in front of you and you can simply click, turn them on or off and use that algorithm whenever you're sort of entering prompt. Now, another thing you should try also while you hit slash settings and come to this area is try out remix mode by pressing that button here that says remix mode and then simply head to an image or a set of images and click on the make variations button and then you can actually change your prompt. So I'm gonna change this from robot to turtle and it'll actually use the same image and all the information to remix this into a new image of similar design. And you can see we have an image with similar layout composition, close up of the face, but instead of a robot, it's now a turtle face. So you've actually remixed that prompt, but kept a lot of the information there from the original to get something very similar, but matching our new prompt. Now you can also do something similar using dash dash seed, which is kind of a like a randomized number used to uh, start off an image when made in mid journey. So if you can create the same seed, you can get very similar results. And the way you find that out is to find an image, go to add a reaction and choose the envelope, much like we did with the video earlier. And you'll actually get another sort of message pop up in mid journey and you'll see there a seed with a number. Copy that number and then go down to type in your prompt, then type in dash dash seed, and then paste the number and hit enter. And once again, we have a similar layout, a close up of the face, a similar look on the face, but a few differences. Because we had a Terminator face, it's got red eyes instead of blue, more human than robot, but we've used the same seed and got a very similar result. So that's something else you can try when trying to create something similar in mid journey to an existing image. The next is dash dash chaos, which allows Midjourney to control how much chaos and chaotic behaviors in the, the way it runs the algorithm. So if I type in dash dash chaos at the end of my prompt with a zero, I can try that out, but I'm also gonna try dash dash chaos 100 with the same prompt so we can compare the two and see the difference. And this image has a chaos of zero. As you can see, it seems to follow our prompt pretty directly. But switch to an image with a chaos of 100 and it's a little less predictable in the way it's sort of interpreted the prompt. So I created this at a chaos of 50 to see what the midway was like and you can see it's a little more predictable but still a little chaotic in the way it's interpreted the prompt which is pretty interesting and kind of worth a play I think. Another tip for interesting results is to use different algorithms but remaster. So even if I take this image it was made with the version 1 algorithm earlier and hit remaster I actually get some pretty cool results. And you can see that Mid Journey kind of takes those weird artifacts and strange shapes and interprets them into something else, which may not necessarily happen if you do a straight up version four or test render. So definitely have a play with that and see what you can actually make happen by using a really old algorithm with remaster or even just version three and remaster to get some, some cool images. Another thing you can do is actually set your own custom codes by going to slash prefer option set, hit enter. Now where it says option, you want to give it a code. So I might call this something like uh, tube or something like that for YouTube thumbnail, I don't know, basically. And then I'm just gonna hit tab a couple times until value pops up or from on my phone, I'll actually tap value on my phone. And then I'm gonna add some codes such as AR16-9. Make sure you leave space and get these codes correct, dash dash video, dash dash quality of two. I can add in as many codes as I want to and hit enter. And now I have a custom option for tube. So now I type my image prompt dog on a skateboard and type in dash dash tube. And because I have dash dash tube and I've set those options, I hit enter. You'll notice the prompt says dog on a skateboard and it has my aspect ratio, video, and quality of two. And all I've had to do is type in dash dash two because I've set 
a custom code that I can use. And as you can see, it's created. My image has got double quality. It's in 16 to 9. So I've able, been able to use that code and save myself typing out all those instructions every time. So now if I want to remove that code, I go slash prefer option set. And then I type in tube, which is the command I just made. It's also going to show up here. I hit enter without adding a value. And it will say custom option tube removed. But there's also something else. If you don't want to have to type in codes at all, maybe there's a period, maybe you're going to be working on a project that requires some particular options. You can also type in prefer suffix. And then if I go new value, I can type in dash dash. I'm going to use aspect ratio as an example. I can say 21 or I'm going to say 9 to 21. So we get a really tall image. And that will add that value to the end of my prompts. So now I type in imagine and I choose, say, something like glowing dark portal. I add nothing else to it. And it's added the aspect ratio automatically. And now you can see it's created my image at this higher, taller aspect ratio without me actually having to punch in that aspect ratio when I create that prompt. This is great if you're creating a ton of imagery that you need at a particular aspect ratio or using particular settings. Keep in mind, you will want to remove that suffix. So go slash prefer suffix, hit enter, enter again, and it'll say the suffix is now removed. As long as you enter no value, it will remove that suffix. Now, the next one I want to touch on is using word weight. So let's say at the up the top here, I've got a dog with a cat and a mouse. I'm going to see what that looks like. Now you'll notice the image has prioritized the dog, but not so much the cat, and there's definitely no mouse to be found. So if I copy this exact prompt, type in imagine, this time I go two colons and I give the dog a weight of 0.5, the cat a weight of two, by double colon and two, I can give the mouse a weight of five. So now it's going to, because five is the highest number, prioritize the word mouse first, then cat, and then dog. And the default is actually one, so dog will actually be prioritized less than with and an A. So let's see what results we get this time. So now you can see, despite the fact the prompt is more or less the same, all we've done is change the priority of these words the mouse is now the um, sort of main thing that's popping up with the cat a little bit in the background here, but the dog is pretty much non-existent. So it's not the perfect example, but you understand how that works and something you can experiment with to try and get more control over your results. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure you actually back up your images so you don't lose them. Because if you cancel your account, they might end up disappearing. So if you log in to your Mid Journey account, one thing you can do is here in your home, you can actually uh, wait for your images to load and go up the top right here to this little pointer and you can go through and select multiple images and go open downloader to back up. Or the faster way to do it is actually to go here to archive. Now this is overlap, so I need to zoom out and you can select entire days of images and go open downloader at the bottom and you can download all of these to your computer. Now that's not my final tip. My final tip is actually to, I would actually recommend looking a little outside of AI so you have more freedom with the images you get. I highly recommend learning a program like Adobe Photoshop so that way you can take your AI images, mash them up, do what you need to, cut them out, have complete freedom over the end results so you can use them for whatever purposes you want. Uh, definitely having some Photoshop skills combined with AI is a really, really great way to go. But you also want to learn about certain tools you can use to get different results. So if you use the video that I've popped up on the screen, it's going to show you a bunch of mid-journey tools you can use uh, for AI art in general, not just mid-journey, to uh, improve your images and get uh, better AI art. Thanks for watching the video, and I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.